Hello and thanks for using TickBoom. For this video, I'll be working through the last question we see in this screenshot that a student has sent through to me. Um, it says to show that z to the 5 minus 1 is equal to z minus 1 times z squared minus 2z cos 2 pi and 5 plus 1 times z squared minus 2z cos 4 pi and 5 plus 1. Now this may look quite complex at first glance, but I think whenever you see a question like this where it's z to the power of something minus 1, what you want to think of is the, the roots of unity and how to find the roots of unity of that and to see whether that helps you. And particularly in this result we see things like cos 2 pi and 5 and cos 4 pi and 5. They look like solutions of roots of unity problems. So I think um, for the very first step, what we'll do is we'll find all the roots of unity of z to the 5 minus 1. Now what I'll do is I'll, I'll write what we're being asked to show. So we want to show that z to the 5 minus 1 is equal to z minus 1 times uh, z squared minus 2z cos 2 pi on 5 plus 1 and all of that then multiplied by z squared minus 2z cos 4 pi on 5 plus 1. So as I mentioned I think finding the roots of unity of z to the 5 minus 1 equals 0 would be a good place to start. So um, if z to the 5 minus 1 is equal to 0 then uh, if we if we let z equal cis pi, or sorry, cis theta, so uh, that's just a shorthand version of cos theta plus i sine theta, then what we're really saying is that uh, z to the 5 minus 1 is the same as cis 5 theta minus 1. Because we're just using De Moivre's theorem there to say z to the 5 is cis 5 theta. Um, therefore, um, z to the 5 minus 1 equals 0 leads to cis 5 theta equals minus 1 equals 0 or cis 5 theta is equal to 1. That, that's an equivalent statement. Now, something worth noting is that cis of... 2 pi times k will be equal to 1 um, when k is some integer. And that's making use of the cos and sine curves and noting that whenever you have multiples of 2 pi, you're always going to get um, 1. The sine of 2 pi will drop off and you'll get cos of 2 pi or any multiple of 2 pi being 1. So what we can conclude from that is that z to the 5 minus 1 will equal 0 when, and we can set these two arguments to be the same, when 5 theta is equal to 2 pi k. And um, if I rearrange for theta, that means theta will be 2 on 5 pi k. Notice we've got a on 5 here. 2 on 5, 4 on 5, so it kind of shows we're getting um, probably in the ballpark here. Um, and, and this will be for um, uh, negative pi, theta between negative pi and pi with equality at plus pi. So therefore what we can say is that um, the solutions to z to the 5 minus 1 equals 0 occur uh, when basically negative pi is less than theta, which is 2 pi k on 5, which is less than or equal to pi. So if I cancel out these pi's and bring up the, the 5 and down the 2, we'll get negative 5 on 2 less than k less than or equal to 5 on 2. So that's um, the inequality that needs to hold true. Therefore, we can conclude that k, the solutions will occur when k is equal to, noting that k must be an integer, 
So we just want to count all the integers in this range. So we're going to get um, negative 2, then negative 1, then 0, then 1, then 2. And we stop there first, lastly, because if I got to 3, I'd be outside the range. But also, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 solutions, which whenever you've got z to the 5, there'd be 5 solutions. z to the n would have n solutions. So that's our 5 solutions, the, the value of k. So if I just plug k back in, we'll get all the thetas. So the theta, the solution will be um, negative 4 pi on 5 negative 2 pi on 5, 0, 2 pi on 5, and then positive 4 pi on 5. And again, we're looking good because we've got 2 pi's and 4 pi's on 5 here, so um, this path that we're taking I think is going to lead us to something useful. Um, now the other thing to uh, make use of here is that the sum of complex roots is equal to zero. So that's a, something that's true that we can probably make use of to then get all of these complex roots, perhaps get them into a format that helps us with um, what we're ultimately trying to show. So what I, I might turn over to then kind of expand on this, but what we can conclude if the sum of all the complex roots is zero, then we could say that cis negative four pi on five plus cis negative two pi on five plus, well, it will be cis of z zero, but cis of zero is just going to be one, so I'll say plus one, um, plus cis of positive 2 pi on 5 plus cis of positive 4 pi on 5, that's all going to be equal to 0, that's sum. So um, doing a, a bit of rearranging, what we could then say is, well, maybe what I'll do is I'll expand this, each of these cis into the cos plus i sine theta and see what we can do there. So we're going to have, um, and I'll bring the, the 1 over eventually. So we'll have cos negative 4 pi on 5 plus i sine negative 4 pi on 5 plus cos negative 2 pi on 5 plus i sine negative 2 pi on 5. I'll leave the 1 for now because I'm going to move it over. So then we'll get plus cos 2 pi on 5, plus i sine 2 pi on 5, plus cos 4 pi on 5, plus i sine 4 pi on 5. That's all going to be equal to negative 1. Now, we can then use our odd and even functions to write the cos of anything negative, we can just write cos of the positive angle. And the i sine of anything negative, we can bring the negative out the front. So what we'll get is cos 4 pi on 5. This becomes cos 4 pi on 5. This becomes minus i sine 4 pi on 5. Plus cos 2 pi on 5. Minus i sine 2 pi on 5 plus cos 2 pi on 5 plus i sine 2 pi on 5 plus cos 4 pi on 5 plus i sine 4 pi on 5. All of that will be equal to negative 1. And now we can um, cancel some things out. This minus i sine 2 pi on 5 will cancel with the plus i sine 2 pi on 5. The minus i sine 4 pi on 5 will cancel with the plus i sine 4 pi on 5. So we're only going to be left with coses, and we'll have two of each, two of the cos 2 pi on 5 and two of the cos 4 pi on 5. So we can conclude that 2 times cos of uh, the 2 pi on 5 
plus 2 times the cos of 4 pi on 5 is equal to negative 1. So that's a result that um, I think um, we can then uh, make use of, or hopefully make use of, um, when we're trying to, to show this. Now, I think from here, now that we've got this result, the next natural step would be to take this right-hand side and expand it and then see if it then simplifies down to the left-hand side because if that's the case, then we've shown the equality. So what? let's, let's do that. Let's, um, we're going to have our z minus 1 times the z squared minus 2z cos 2 pi on 5 plus 1 times the z squared minus 2z cos 4 pi on 5 plus 1. Let's just start expanding that. So I'll leave the z minus 1 there for now. And let's just multiply out this. So what are we going to get? We're going to get z squared times z squared is z to the 4. z squared times minus 2z would be minus 2z cubed cos 4 pi on 5 plus z squared and then minus 2z cos 2 pi on 5 times z squared would be minus 2z cubed cos 2 pi on 5 this times this would be plus 4z squared cos 2 pi on 5 times cos 4 pi on 5 and then we'll get a minus 2z cos 2 pi on 5 so that's multiplied that out now the plus 1 so we get plus z squared minus 2z cos 4 pi on 5 plus 1 okay um, now let's see if we can kind of get this in a useful format. So we'll leave, we'll keep the z minus 1 there for now. And we'll see if we can factor so that we can get this result so that then we can substitute in minus 1 where possible. So we're going to have our z to the 4. That will stay. In terms of what's with our... Um, We've got a minus 2z cubed cos 4 pi on 5 and a minus 2z cubed cos 2 pi on 5. So we could then say minus z cubed bracket and um, we get 2 cos 2 pi on 5 plus 2 cos 4 pi on 5. So we've kind of dealt with that item, we've dealt with that item and we've dealt with that item. Um, in terms of our z squareds, we've got two of those, so we'll go plus 2z squared, so we've dealt with both of those. Um, here we've got another 2 pi and 5 and a 4 pi and 5, so I could say minus z, um, 2 cos 2 pi on 5 plus 2 cos 4 pi on 5. So that's dealt with that and that. So now we just need to write what's left. So we'll have our plus 4z squared cos 2 pi on 5 times cos 4 pi on 5 plus 1. Now we can um, start to substitute in some results. So we'll get equal to z minus 1 times z to the 4 minus z cubed times, and this is just negative 1 from before, plus 2z squared minus z times, and again, negative 1. Now this um, 4z squared times cos 2 pi and 5 times cos 4 pi and 5, so we'll get plus 4z squared, and let's see what if we just get out our calculator, um, if I go 2 times 180 divided by 5, 
So 72 is the angle we're dealing with, and then um, uh, 72 times 2 for the 4 pi and 5, so 144. So if I said 72 cos times 144 cos, we get minus a quarter as our result. So that's just turned out to be a handy result because that this can then simplify to times minus 1 on 4 and then we've still got our plus 1 at the end. So if I just turn over um, and we'll simplify this again, so we'll get equals z minus 1 times z to the 4 plus z cubed Um, plus 2z squared plus z and this will be um, the 4s will cancel so we'll get minus z squared plus 1 so this will become z minus 1 z to the 4 plus z cubed the plus 2z squared minus z squared would become plus z squared plus z plus 1. Now if I expand this, we'll get z to the 5 plus z to the 4 plus z to the cubed plus z squared plus z minus z to the 4 minus z cubed minus z squared minus z minus 1. And then we get to cancel all of these items and we get left with z to the 5 minus 1 as required. So there we've, we've shown, we've worked through the steps to show that this right hand side can actually simplify down to what was on the left hand side. And the way we got there was first working out the solutions to the z to the 5 minus 1 equals 0, so the roots of unity. It turned out that, that um, those roots of unity got us a result that when we inserted into our right hand side we were able to simplify things down. So I think when you're faced with a question like this it might look a bit daunting but if you just work through the steps, work out the roots of unity, see where you get to um, hopefully where you end up is with something that, that will help you then take the right hand side, expand, simplify and get to the left hand side. So hopefully you've been able to follow along with all of that. It's quite, quite, quite a lot of work in the end but hopefully it all made sense to you and um, that's been helpful. So uh, tick boom!